Imagine waking up to a horse's head in your bed. Now, imagine that head is real. That's exactly what happened in the infamous scene from The Godfather. The graphic and shocking nature of this scene was not merely a product of cinematic magic, but rather a chilling dose of reality. The horse's head was indeed real, procured from a pet food manufacturer leading to actor John Marley's genuine scream of horror. This shocking revelation sparked a wave of controversy and backlash. Animal rights activists were up in arms and the film industry was left reeling from the audacious move. Yet, the scene has since become one of the most iconic in film history, serving as a testament to the lengths that filmmakers will go to achieve authenticity. Despite the controversy, this scene has etched itself into our collective consciousness, a haunting reminder of the raw power of cinema. The authenticity of the scene remains one of cinema's most shocking moments to this date. Ever wondered why the word mafia never crops up in The Godfather? Well, it's not an accidental omission. The absence of this notorious term is a fascinating tale that intertwines the real and the real. Joe Colombo, a real-life mobster, had a hand in the film's making. Known as the head of one of New York's five families, Columbo was a figure of substantial influence and power in the underworld. Interestingly, he was also a man of surprising media savvy. When he got wind of the film, he saw an opportunity to shape its narrative. To ensure that the film didn't anger Columbo or his underworld compatriots, the filmmakers had to tread carefully. They knew that certain words and portrayals could spark the wrath of the mafia, so in a move of caution and respect, they decided to completely avoid using the term mafia. Now, you might be thinking, surely they had to refer to the crime syndicate in some way, and you'd be right. The filmmakers did use a term, but it was so subtly woven into the script that it's easy to miss. La Cosa Nostra, a term that translates to our thing in Italian, is used just once in the entire film. This delicate dance around terminology wasn't simply a creative choice, it was a strategic move designed to appease the real-life counterparts of the film's characters. The filmmakers knew they were treading on dangerous ground, dealing with a topic that was not just sensitive, but potentially lethal. The Godfather's avoidance of the term mafia is a testament to the film's respect for authenticity and its awareness of the real-world implications of its narrative. It's a reminder that, even in the world of fiction, reality has a way of asserting its presence. So the next time you watch The Godfather listen closely, you might just catch that lone mention of La Cosa Nostra. And when you do, remember the story behind its inclusion and the careful omission of the M-word. It seems life truly does imitate art, or is it the other way around? The Godfather's Luca Brussi wasn't just a fictional mob enforcer. In fact, the actor who portrayed him, Lenny Montana, had a past as colorful as the character he played. Before stepping onto the silver screen, Montana was a professional wrestler, his towering frame and imposing presence making him a formidable opponent in the ring. But wrestling was not his only venture into the world of physical confrontation. Montana also had a stint as an enforcer for one of the most infamous criminal organizations in America, the Gambino crime family. Yes, you heard it right. The same Gambino family that held sway over New York's underworld for decades. Montana's connection with the family was no secret, and it was this link that led to him being cast in The Godfather. His background in wrestling and his involvement with the Gambino family added a layer of authenticity to his character that few actors could match. His portrayal of Luca Brasi was not simply a performance, it was a reflection of a life lived on the edges of society, in the shadows of the law. In his portrayal of Luca Brasi, Montana brought a unique blend of physical intimidation and quiet menace. His deep-set eyes and imposing frame made him the perfect embodiment of Brazi, a character who was feared and respected in equal measure in the Corleone family. Yet Montana's performance was more than just a physical one, he lent an emotional depth to Brazi, showing a man who was fiercely loyal to the Corleone family, willing to do whatever it took to protect them. This emotional undertone added a human element to Brazi's character making him more than just an enforcer. Sometimes casting is all about finding the right fit, even if it comes from the unlikeliest of places. In the case of The Godfather, that unlikely place was the wrestling ring and the dark corners of New York's criminal underworld. It was there that they found Lenny Montana, a man who brought an unmatched authenticity to the role of Luca Brasi. Did you know that Michael Corleone's Sicilian hideout wasn't just a random choice? 
The intricate web of The Godfather's story extends beyond the film's narrative and into real life in a fascinating way. It seems that the roots of Al Pacino, the actor who masterfully portrayed Michael Corleone, are entwined with the very fabric of the film's plotline. The tale of Michael Corleone seeking refuge in Sicily after committing a murder is a pivotal point in the film. But what might surprise you is the connection this plot twist shares with Pacino's own family history. It turns out that Pacino's grandparents were immigrants who came to the United States from none other than Corleone, Sicily. That's right, the very town where Michael Corleone lays low while the heat of his actions simmers down is actually the ancestral home of the actor who played him. Quite the coincidence, don't you think? This connection adds an extra layer to Pacino's performance and to the film itself. It's as if the actor, unknowingly or not, was drawing upon his own family's history, their journey from the old country to the new world. And maybe just maybe this real-life connection brought an additional sense of authenticity to the character of Michael Corleone? Now whether this was a conscious casting decision or a remarkable stroke of luck, we may never know. But it's these little tidbits of trivia that make The Godfather such an endlessly fascinating piece of cinema. Each viewing, each dive into the behind-the-scenes facts, uncovers something new, something that adds to the grand tapestry of this iconic film. So the next time you watch The Godfather, remember this. As Michael Corleone navigates the Sicilian countryside as he immerses himself in the old ways, he's walking the same path that Al Pacino's grandparents once did, connecting the actor and the character in an intriguing, almost poetic way. It's as if destiny had a hand in shaping the Godfather's narrative. Al Pacino didn't just act out Michael Corleone's pain, he lived it. When you think of the most iconic scenes of The Godfather, one that often springs to mind is when Michael Corleone, played by the incomparable Al Pacino, gets sucker punched by a dirty cop. This isn't just any punch, it's a blow that sends Michael reeling, a punch that reverberates through his jaw and changes the course of his life. But what you might not know is the lengths Pacino went to in order to bring authenticity to that scene. You see, Pacino didn't merely pretend to be in pain, he ensured he was. To do this, he had his jaw wired shut. Yes, you heard that right. Al Pacino, in his quest to portray Michael Corleone as realistically as possible, chose to have his jaw wired shut. It's a decision that might seem extreme to some, but it's a testament to Pacino's commitment to his craft. With his jaw wired shut, Pacino didn't just have to act like he was in pain. He was in pain. Each word he uttered, each grimace he made, was a reflection of the real discomfort he was experiencing and it showed, it showed in the way he moved, the way he spoke, the way he carried himself. In the scenes following the punch, Michael's speech is noticeably affected. His words are muffled, his voice strained. That wasn't just great acting, that was Pacino pushing through the pain, delivering his lines despite the wires constricting his jaw. And it wasn't just about that physical pain. By having his jaw wired shut, Pacino was able to delve deeper into Michael's psyche, to understand the emotional turmoil of a man whose life had been turned upside down, a man who was grappling with the grim realities of his family's business. It's this level of dedication, this unwavering commitment to authenticity, that sets Pacino apart, that makes him one of the greatest actors of his generation. And it's this jaw-dropping performance that cements Michael Corleone's place as one of the most compelling characters in cinematic history. Now that's what you call a method actor. From real horse heads to actual mobsters, The Godfather is as authentic as it gets. The chilling scream, as an actor discovered a genuine horse's head in his bed, was not a performance but a raw, visceral reaction. The film's ties to the underworld were more than just thematic with the involvement of Joe Colombo and former wrestler-turned-Gambino family enforcer Lenny Montana, adding an undeniable layer of authenticity. The commitment to realism extended even to the smallest details like the omission of the word mafia, a conscious decision made to avoid ruffling feathers in the actual crime syndicate. And who could forget the dedication of Al Pacino, who had his jaw wired shut to portray a convincing injury? This relentless pursuit of authenticity pervaded every scene, every line, every frame. Perhaps it's this dedication to authenticity that makes The Godfather a timeless classic.